Hi there, my name is Chins, this is Miniature Mistakes, and today we try out OSL for the first time. When I was doing bases for the first time, I talked about how the reason I started doing them is because all the miniatures that I saw with bases were incredibly thematic. A base was a really nice way to contextualize a miniature and give it some kind of environment, some kind of place to stand in. You can see me making my first base ever by clicking the link over there. When I first discovered OSL, or Object Source Lighting for the first time, I felt the same sort of connection to it, this idea that it could really make a miniature more thematic, that it could really tie a miniature together. So I started looking online on how to achieve the effect and came up with the idea for this video. I decided that this would be the first in the series where essentially I look online for artists that inspire me or tutorials that I'm interested in trying and try them out here or try to mimic the artists that I've looked at. So this version of the tutorial was posted by Marco Frizzoni and I'll put a link to his tutorial in the description. In his tutorial, he has this knack for making the entire process look incredibly easy, something that even a beginner like me could approach with no issues whatsoever. In his video, he gives three simple rules to follow and I figured, okay, that doesn't seem that difficult. And also the effect that he achieved for his miniature in the tutorial was almost exactly what I had envisioned for the miniature that I'm going to be painting today. So let's find out how easy this actually is, or if it is at all. This is the miniature I'm going to be working on. This is the Corvum Necromancer from the Humblewood Tabletop RPG. In Humblewood, a fire elemental is destroying the forests that these humble folk live in. I wanted to showcase this idea with this miniature by having a fire burning behind him and his orb illuminating his front side. When I started prepping to paint this miniature, I primed it like this. This was incorrect. As you can see, one side is completely dark, implying that light was only shining from behind him but not from the front where I wanted the orb to glow. I sprayed over the primer again with a light coat so as not to lose any detail and then came in with some diluted white ink to repaint where I wanted the light to shine. In Marco's tutorial, he talks about three rules to follow. I'll come to the first two in a bit, but the third rule was that the color of an object under light is not only determined by the color of the light itself, but also the color of the thing that the light is hitting. With this in mind, base coating was 100% necessary if this was the case. I went over the robes with Scale75's Black Forest Green. Seemed fitting. Citadel's Retributor Armor for the metal bits and the eyes, a combination of Rhinox Hide and Scale Color's Intense Brown for the staff and the belts, and Magic Blue from Vallejo for the orb. I used a mix of Anthracite Grey and Caspian Blue from Scale 75 for the Raven's Feathers and Petroleum Grey for his talons. I wasn't sure how much highlights and shadows would affect the overall color after the OSL effect was applied, so just to be safe, I also hit the robes with some Spring Green from Scale 75 for the highlights. Time for airbrushing. Going into this, I remembered how difficult it was to control the airbrush the first time I tried out airbrushing, so for each and every step, I tested the spray on my hand before it went onto the mini. I ended up using quite a thin consistency of paint, almost glaze-like, so that I could set the pressure on my compressor quite low, in between 10 to 15 psi in this case. I wanted to get as close to the miniature as possible to make the stream of paint as tight as I could, but also avoid spider webbing, so in my mind this was the way to go. I was barely, and I mean barely pulling back the trigger on the airbrush to get this thin, even stream. I was going to apply white ink again as per Marco's direction to get the light map back, but also to make sure the following paints would show quite clearly on the surface of the miniature. So those rules I mentioned. The first one that Marco talks about is that the source of the light is always the brightest and that the further away something is from the light source, the less illuminated it is. With this in mind, I'm already setting myself up for failure. You can see here that I'm not keeping the orb as the brightest point. By the end of this step, the entire front side is almost equally lit up. This is important to keep in mind as it's going to come into play later in the video. The second rule was actually very easy to apply. Light always travels in straight lines. So does the spray from my airbrush, no issues there. Any quote unquote diffused light or paint in this case is going to end up in the correct place because the airbrush can only spray paint in a straight line to begin with. This would, I assume, not be as easy without the airbrush. With the backside where the fire was going to be, I wasn't too fussed about having it bright all over. I figured this would be reasonable since the light isn't as highly directional and in close proximity as the orb is to the body of the raven. I started with the backside first. In his tutorial, Marco exclusively uses colored inks, but I didn't have any of the inks he uses barring red ink. So instead, I diluted some sun yellow from Vallejo with water to a glaze consistency. This ended up working just as well. 
Already, even with just this step, the notion of an exterior light source is becoming apparent. Next up, I use some Vallejo orange fire. Again, seems fitting. Add a glaze consistency over the yellow to add some warmth to it. I couldn't see the effect at first, so I accidentally oversprayed and some of the paint collected in the folds of the robe. I waited for it to dry a bit and then hit it with some orange again, being extra careful with the airbrush trigger this time. And finally, I used some Scale Color Intense Red ink for the outer edge of the area. This I didn't dilute at all, and as you can see, uh, whoops. I turned the miniature too much, lost accuracy, and hit a part of the model I really didn't want to hit. I was trying to aim for only the outer edge, but, well, accuracy is something I need to work on. I should have ideally diluted the ink and gone in closer with the airbrush to narrow the stream. No biggie, lesson learned. Time for the front portion. I used the magic blue from earlier, again diluted to a glaze consistency, and started spraying. Already, you can start to see I'm not keeping those first two rules in mind. At this rate, the orb is never going to be the brightest thing and the light is already too dispersed, too widespread to be coming from the orb itself. Regardless, I kept going thinking I could add some white on the orb and directly around it to maybe enhance the light from the orb itself. This was around the time that my camera's battery died and I didn't realize, so I'm just gonna have to talk through what I did. I went back to the fireside and did some of the yellows and oranges again. But in doing so, I hit the orb from the back with said yellow onto the existing blue. This of course meant that part of my orb was now green as you can see here. For the front side, I did lighten the blue a bit, but I didn't focus it on the orb. It's all still pretty much evenly lit up and not focused like I wanted it to be. I also didn't repaint the gold bits on the robe and the eyes. The miniature overall still looked like it was being illuminated by moonlight in the front, so I wasn't displeased. I decided to call it a day. Cut to three hours later, I'm unable to sleep because it's bothering me, so I start over. From scratch, I use an ultrasonic cleaner to quickly strip the paint and go through this entire process again. This time, keeping my mistakes in mind. This is what I ended up with. I also narrowed the dispersion of both light sources so I could have some of the original colors of the base coat show through and have more of a presence of shadow. I also really wanted the gold back on the miniature. I went ahead and thinned the gold with some water to still preserve some of that light effect under it. And with that, I was done and I could sleep peacefully. Here's what it finally looked like. As you can see, there's less of an unnatural green color and the light, especially from the orb, is much more directional and focused than it was before. Here's a before and after. Okay, I'm really pleased with how that came out. That is one of the first miniatures that I'm really proud of. It's easily the first miniature that I would display and show to whoever would indulge me. And yeah, the effect was incredibly easy, especially with an airbrush. Having never tried this with a regular brush, I can't attest to how easy or difficult it would be, but with an airbrush, this is incredibly simple, especially when following Marco's rules. There was a point there where I didn't follow the rules that he had stated for the front part of the miniature with the orb, and so I lost the effect that I was trying to achieve, but then going back to it and keeping those rules in mind, you can see the effect was very easily achieved. I'm really pleased that this effect is so easy to achieve, because I'm probably going to apply it wherever I can within reason. If there's some kind of miniature that's holding some kind of artifact or a magical rune or casting a spell, I definitely want to use this effect as much as possible to give that miniature some extra life, just give it that extra flair. I'm really quite pleased with how this turned out, and the secondary consequence of learning how to do this technique was I felt that my airbrush control was far, far better. Having to constantly test on my hand before going onto the miniature to get as accurate an effect as possible, that really helped with figuring out how much I need to pull the trigger, where my pressure needs to be, how far the airbrush needs to be away from the actual miniature. These are all things I talked about in my experimenting with my airbrush video, and just by the very nature of how careful you need to be to achieve this effect, you're kind of forced into respecting the airbrush kind of and, and really figuring it out from scratch. I think I can confidently say that I'd happily make a video of me painting a miniature from start to finish using just an airbrush to see how much control I really have over it. I think that could be quite interesting and might teach me a few more things and help fulfill that goal of becoming a better miniature painter. If the idea of that kind of content interests you, then I'll be coming up with new videos each week where I just test out new stuff, experiment with other stuff, 
And if you'd like to see more, then don't forget to show that like button some love and hit that subscribe button if you're new here. Thank you for watching. Until next time.